Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the decomposition of certain chlorofluorocarbons, freons, particularly to the extent that they break up to yield an atom of chlorine. Atomic chlorine is known to be a significant catalyst for the decomposition of ozone. So one thing we might want to do is to try to predict using computational chemistry, which freons would be most likely to undergo this type of cleavage. So seeing in the case of freon 11, what ends up happening in the atmosphere is you have a break in one of the carbon chlorine bonds. We have what we call homolytic cleavage. It breaks in such a way that each of electron that was in the bonding pair goes to a different species. So one goes to the remaining carbon chain, and one goes with chlorine, giving it seven electrons, making it a free radical and a potent catalyst for the decomposition of ozone. Now, one challenge is that when we have these radicals with odd numbers of electrons, we have to use specific computational methods, which aren't quite as accurate as the methods that we use for closed shell, even number of electron systems. A convenient way to surmount some of these difficulties with odd number electron systems is by means of so-called isodesmic reactions. So in isodesmic reactions, we always have closed shelled even number of electrons reactions that we're using to model the one where we do have a homolytic bond cleavage. So in our particular cases, we're looking to compute the, um, the enthalpy of the chlorofluorocarbon and of dihydrogen, that's the reactants. And the products are going to be the chlorofluorocarbon with the chlorine atom replaced by hydrogen plus hydrochloric acid. This has the advantage that they're the same number and types of bonds on both sides of the arrow. So we have a cancellation of errors. In table one, see a compilation of the 12 freons that we examined and the calculated enthalpies of reactions for these isodesmic reactions, which should be uh, corresponding to the reactions where we actually have the formation of the atomic chlorine free radical. We notice, looking at table one, that freon 31 has substantially the lowest enthalpy of reaction here, which means we predict this would be the freon that would most easily break up to yield atomic chlorine in the stratosphere and thereby affect ozone. As a reminder, here are the structure and the computed geometry of freon 31, along with its molecular formula and the computed enthalpy of reaction. Here is freon 11. It has a computed enthalpy of reaction of a little more than 59.76 kcals per mole. Freon 12 has a computed enthalpy of reaction of 57.13 kcals per mole. For Freon 13, the computed enthalpy of reaction is a little more than 55.64 kcals per mole. For freon 21, the computed enthalpy of reaction is going to be 45.12 kcals per mole. For 
for the last of the one carbon freons we're going to look at, freon 22, the computed enthalpy of reaction is nearly 42 kcal per mole. Here is the structure of freon 121. And notice that its enthalpy of reaction is much larger than for the one carbon one we look at so far, up to 77.95 kcal per mole. The computational methods that we're using have a mean accuracy of about four or five kcal per mole. Freon 122. Again, a two carbon freon has a large enthalpy of reaction. Here's 72.6 kcal per mole. For freon 123, the enthalpy of reaction computed is 75.46 kcal per mole. Next, we have freon 131. Its computed enthalpy of reaction to break up and yield a chlorine radical is a little more than 67 kcal per mole. For freon 132, the computed enthalpy of reaction is 60.9278 kcal per mole. And the last freon that we examined, 133, has a computed enthalpy of reaction of 67.4492 kcal per mole. Here, for convenience, we show what is left over after we have the homolytic bond cleavage and the formation of the chlorine radical. So we also have a carbon free radical that's left over and we can conveniently see the uh, six structures for the uh, one carbon systems. Remember those were the ones that had the lowest computed energies of reaction so the ones we would predict would most easily generate those free radicals. So since the rad radical that's being formed in every single case is an atom of chlorine, the uh, main determinant of the enthalpy of reaction is how stable is the remaining free radical. The more stable it is, the lower the energy of reaction, and the more easily the uh, chlorine and remaining carbon radicals form. So here we see for freons 11, 12, 13, 21, 22, and 31. An important rule for the stability of carbon radical is that electron donating groups say alkyl groups, they push electron density towards the free radical and stabilize it. Electron withdrawing groups, particularly the very electronegative elements like fluorine and chlorine, they withdraw electron density and therefore destabilize the remaining radical. So based upon that, anything that has the more fluorines and chlorines it has, the less stable it's going to be. So we see that in our top row, the remaining radicals have three halogens, either two chlorines and a fluorine, or three fluorines, or some combination thereof. Those had um, relatively high energies of reaction because that radical that remains is destabilized by that electron withdrawing. On the other hand, we notice for 31, it only has a single halogen withdrawing electron density, and the two hydrogens are essentially neutral. They don't donate or withdraw. So the reason why the uh, freon 31 is the easiest to form is because of those radicals that we're comparing, we're comparing radicals to radicals, the most stabilized one there, or the least destabilized one, is the freon 31. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.